Captain Sully Seagull, are you ready? Let's go. It's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Here we go with chapter 10, lesson number 3, an introduction to matrices. So first of all, what is a matrix? Bum, bum, bum. Well, a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers, such as these matrices here, A, B, C, and D. A matrix with M rows and N columns is said to have order M times N, or M by N. The entry or element in row I and column J of matrix A is denoted by A, I, J. For example, this matrix here, matrix A, what is the order of that? We can see there are two rows running along the way, there are three columns running up and down, the rows always come first, so that there would be a two by three matrix. Entry A, one, three, so first row, third column would be negative one. And entry A, two, one, well that would be the second row, first column, so that would be three. Matrix B, what is the order of this? Perfect, it is a two by two matrix. It has two rows and two columns. The rows always come first. Entry B, one, two would equal, what do you think? Zero. Perfect, it would be zero because you're in the first row and the second column and that would be this entry here, zero. Matrix B has a special name. It is called a, what do you think? Perfect, it is a square matrix since the order is of the form N by N or M by M. Basically, these numbers are the same. Matrix C, what would the order of that be? Good, that is a three by one matrix. And entry C, three, one would equal, well, third row, one, two, three, first column, that there would be two. Matrix C, it is known as a, what do you think, Ryan? Column. Perfect, it is known as a column matrix because it is of the order M tap I one. Matrix D, what would the order of that be? Good, that's gonna be a one by four matrix. It has one row and four columns. Entry D, one, three would equal, what do you think? Well, the first row, well, there only is one row, and then the third column, one, two, three, that there would equal five. Matrix D is known as A, what do you think? Well then, Sandy, it is a row matrix, since the order is of the form one by N. Equal matrices. Two matrices are equal if the two matrices are of the same order, they have to be of the same order, and all the corresponding entries are equal. So for example, given that this matrix here with 2x0, negative 1, and x plus y equals this matrix with 6, 0, negative 1, 1, find the values of x and y. So how would you go about doing that? Anybody have any ideas? Max, you are perfectly right, you could equate some of the entries. Remember, two matrices are equal if the order is the same. Well, the order of this matrix, well, this has two rows, two columns, so that is a two by two matrix. And the order of this matrix, again, two rows, two columns, is a two by two. And it's saying here they're equal, so in other words, this two X here must equal this six. The zero here obviously equals zero, the negative one would equal negative one, and the X plus Y would equal one. So the corresponding entries are equal. Because of that, you can equate the entries. We can say, just what I've circled there, the two X is equal to the six. So you can say two X equals six. And this would then mean that, you got it, X equals three, well done. What could you also do then? How would you find the value of Y? What could you do there, Lily? Brilliant, you know this X plus Y must be equal to this one. And if X plus Y equals one, well, you can just swap the X for three because we know X is three, we just found that out. So when X plus Y equals one, that means three add Y is one, meaning then the value of Y is the negative two. So you can finish that off by saying that X equals three and Y equals negative two. Woo! Let's take that stage further. What about these two matrices here? So you've got two, one, three, five, and two, one, zero, three, five, zero. What do you think for that, Sufyan, would they be equal? No, you think they're not equal, why not? 
good because the order is different. This here, it has two rows and two columns. This one here has two rows and one, two, three columns. Bum, bum, bum. That means they are not equal. There is a different order. Well done. Addition and subtraction of matrices. Matrices of the same order. So here with example two, we've got a two by three matrix. And here we've got another two by three matrix. They can be added or subtracting by adding or subtracting the corresponding entries. So with this example two, we know then that if we're adding the corresponding entries, we're going to have this entry in the first row, first column, and we'd add it to this entry in the first row and the first column. So we'd have three add two. What would we then do? Well, we'd take the entry in the first row in the second column and add it to this entry here in the first row in the second column. So that would be four add negative one. And we would just keep working our way along. So we would have the first row third column and then the first row third column. So we'd have the five add two. We'd then do the exact same thing with the next row. So we'd have negative two add three. We'd have one add one and we would have three add negative six. And if we work that out, that will give us for the top row, five, three, and seven, and for the bottom row, one, two, and negative three. And that there will be our answer when we add these two matrices together. Let's try the next one, example three. Well, you can see here the matrices have the same order. That has two rows, two columns, two rows, two columns. So we can subtract these matrices. Start off first row, first column, first row, first column. So we would have this time, because we are subtracting, five take away one. And for the next entry, well, beside that, we've got the first row, second column. So we've got the first row, second column. So we can subtract these. So we'd have one take away, negative two. We do the exact same thing with the next row. We'd have negative two take away two. And we'd have three take away four. So negative two take away two and three take away four. That means the answer to this will be four and three for the top row and then negative four, negative one for the bottom row. Woo! And that is the addition and subtraction of matrices. Scalar multiplication. So if K is a scalar or in other words, just a number, the matrix Ka is formed by multiplying each entry of the matrix A by K. So for example, example four, if we have this matrix here, two, one, negative three, five, we've got a three in front of this. What this means is we're multiplying this matrix by the scalar, by the number three. So all we do, just like multiplying out brackets with algebra, we just want to multiply everything in the brackets by this three. So up here with the two, we'd have the three times two. With the one, we're multiplying that by three as well, so that'd be three times one. With the next row, we've got a negative three and a five, and we're multiplying each of them again by three, so we'd have three times the negative three. And we've got the five, and we're multiplying that by three as well, so we've got a three times five. Meaning then, if we multiply all of these entries by three, we will end up with six and three for the top row, and negative nine, 15 for the second row. Example five, if we have negative two times this matrix here with four, zero, negative one, negative three, two, and one, well, we're going to again multiply every single entry by negative two. So the top row, well, just now it's four, zero, negative one, but each of those entries were multiplying by negative two. So it's negative two times the four, negative two times the zero, and negative two times the negative one. We're multiplying negative two by each entry in this row as well. So it's negative two times the negative three, negative two times two, and negative two times one. And if you work that out, you will end up getting doo -doo 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 -doo, negative eight, zero, and two for the top row, and the bottom row, you'd have six, negative four, and negative two. Woo! Let's try one more like that. Example six. Given the matrices A, B, and C, find the matrix 2A plus 3B take away 2C. How could you start this one off, Sahana? What could you do? Perfect. We know we're going to have this matrix A, which is 1, 2, 
3, negative 1, and we're multiplying every entry by 2. That will be, give us 2a. So it's 2 times that matrix a. We're then going to be adding on three lots of matrix B, which is 2, 0, negative 1, 2. So it's three times the 2, 0, negative 1, 2. And then we're taking away 2C. So we're taking away two lots of the negative 2, 4, 5, 0. So you're going to write that out first of all. From there, because we've got this matrix and we've got the 2 in front of it, we've got this scalar in front of the matrix, we're going to multiply every single entry by that scalar, by that number. So that will give us... Well, we multiply the 1 by the 2, the 2 by the 2, the 3 by the 2, the next 1 by the 2, and we get the 2, 4, 6, and negative 2. We're wanting to add 3 lots of this matrix, so again, multiply every single entry by 3. That will give us 6 and 0 for the top row, negative 3 and 6 for the next row. And there we're wanting to subtract, well, work out 2 times every single entry here. So multiplying everything by 2, we'll get negative 4 and 8 for the top row, and 10 and 0 for the next row. In order to work that out, well, because we are subtracting this one here, really what we're doing is we can take the first entries. So take everything in the first row, first column. And we know working our way along from left to right, well, you can see that we're going to be adding these matrices together and then we're subtracting this matrix. So we'd have 2 add 6 and then we're taking away the negative 4. With the entry in the first row, second column, well, we've got this 4 add on 0, and then we're taking away 8. So that'll be 4, add 0, take away 8. With the next row, we're doing the same thing. So we would end up with the 6, add on negative 3, and then take away 10. And then for the entry in the second row, second column, we'd have this negative 2, add on 6, and then take away a 0. That will give us, help me out, 12, negative 4. Perfect. And the bottom row, negative 7, 4. Yes, well done, it would be negative 7, 4. Fantastic. The transpose of a matrix. What's that all about? Well, the transpose of a matrix A is denoted by a dash, and it is formed by swapping the rows and the columns of matrix A. So in other words, the first row of matrix A becomes the first column of the matrix A dash, the transpose. And the second row would become the second column, the third row would become the third column, and so on. So here if we have this matrix A, what is the order of matrix A? 2 by 3! Perfect! It has two rows, three columns. It is a 2 by 3 matrix. The transpose of that matrix we write as A dash, and this first row, the first row here is 3, 4, 5, so that first row would become the first column. So the first column running down the way would be 3, 4, 5. The second row the 2, negative 1, 3 would become the second column. So running down the way, we would have the 2, negative 1, 3. So you can see here we have swapped the rows for the columns. A couple of notes about the transpose of a matrix. So if matrix A is of the order M by N, then A dash, the transpose, will be of order N by M. So you can see with this example here, this is a 2 by 3 matrix, but what we have ended up with when we take the transpose is we have ended up with a 3, 3 rows, by 2, 2 columns, matrix. Another note, if you take the transpose of a transpose, you just end up back with matrix A. So the transpose of the transpose of matrix A is just going to be A. So really, if we had the transpose of matrix A and we took the transpose again, well, the first row would become the first column. And you can see, really, we'd be going back to this. So the transpose of a transpose really just cancels out. Another note, if you add matrices A and B and take the transpose of that result, well, that's the same as taking the transpose of matrix A, the transpose of matrix B, and adding them together. And finally, if you multiply matrix A by a scalar and then take the transpose, well, that's the same as taking the transpose and then multiplying by K. You get the exact same thing. Symmetric and skew symmetric matrices. So, a matrix A is said to be symmetric if the transpose of matrix A is equal to matrix A. 
So for example, here we've got matrix A. It is a three by three matrix, three rows and three columns. We can see this first row is one, three, five. So if we want the transpose, well that first row, the one, three, five becomes the first column, one, three, five, just running down the way in a column. The second row with three, two, negative one would become that second column. So we've got the three, the two, the negative one. And the bottom row, this third row, five, negative one, seven, becomes the third column, five, negative one, seven. We can see from this, good, the matrices, matrix A, and the transpose of matrix A is the exact same. They are equal, and that means matrix A is symmetric. A symmetric matrix is always a square, so it's always going to be 3 by 3, or 4 by 4, or 5 by 5, and it's always symmetrical about the leading diagonal. The leading diagonal would be this one here. So it's always going to be symmetrical about that, going from the top left to the bottom right. So if you take the transpose of matrix A and you end up with matrix A, then you can say that that matrix is symmetric, just like this one. If you have a matrix A and you take the transpose, and really when you take the transpose, you end up with the negative of matrix A, that is known to be skew symmetric. So we've got this matrix A here again, it's a three by three matrix. If we take the transpose of this three by three matrix, well, the first row, this zero, three, negative five would become the first column. So zero, three, negative five. The second row, negative three, zero, one, would become the second column, negative three, zero, and one. And the third row, five, negative one, zero, would become the third column. So five, negative one, and zero. And what do you notice with this one? We can see that the transpose of matrix A is equal to the negative of matrix A. So we can see here, well, zero would stay a zero, three has become negative three, negative five has become positive five, the negative three has become, become a positive three, zero stayed a zero, one has become a negative one, and so on. Really, the transpose of matrix A is the same as the negative of matrix A. And if that is the case, then matrix A is said to be skew symmetric. A skew symmetric matrix with must always once again, the same as a, a symmetric matrix, it must always be square, so three by three, four by four, and so on. And all the entries in the leading diagonal for a skew symmetric matrix must always be zero, as you can see here. So the leading diagonal going from top left to bottom right, all those entries must be zero if it's skew symmetric. Try some of these questions in the Unit 3 booklet, pages 7 to 9. If you still need the booklet, send me an email and I will fire it off to you. Good luck. Have fun. Bye. Woo!